welcome to the second series of Amp Next Gen, a spin-off series from our usual podcast, the Age Group Multisport Podcast, with me, Richard Conway. And in this series of podcasts, um, we're going to introduce three amateur multi-sport athletes who have agreed to share their journeys to try and qualify to represent GB Age Group in 2025. And as I said, we first did this in 2022, and it's basically come about as our youngest athlete, Harrison, um, wanted to come on the podcast and was waiting to see if he'd qualified. Unfortunately, he just missed out this year, but I thought, why not make a new series of Next Gen, which he could be part of? So I put a post out and I asked around to see if anybody else was looking to qualify, and then it suddenly dawned on me that two of my team mates are also trying to qualify for the first time to represent GB. And so we have got three athletes and those athletes you'll be hearing from shortly. The preliminary interviews have been done, so they're going to tell you a little bit about themselves and, like I said, what races they aim to qualify in and for and um, a little bit about them. So hope you enjoy it. And the first one, as I've already mentioned, is Harrison King, a young man. And then two of my teammates, Jerry Moss and Daniela Dimitrescu. Um, great people, really hard working, and uh, I'm sure they're going to all be successful. So I hope you enjoy this spin off. It's been a pleasure to put together, and we wish these athletes all the best, and we'll enjoy following them and supporting them throughout the journey. So here they are, and I shall see you on the other side. So, um, I started off as a dancer, but then during lockdown, um, I kind of went into, because everything went online, so uh, I started doing Zwift, like a lot of people. So I, just before getting into lockdown, I was like, oh, cycling looks like a bit of fun. Um, so I was like, I tried to get my first road bike. So it was doing just before lockdown, I got my first road bike and then everything shut down, of course. Yeah. So, um, so I basically started going on Zwift and then, because I had contacts at um, Team Indie Peddlers, which is a cycling team, um, who recommended Planet RC, which is the cycling team that I race for. Um, I still race for them now for like time trials and crits etc um so then so i was doing that and i was like oh because i watched a couple of videos with gcn and gtn i thought that mm-hmm. was fun. so in may 2022 when i was 15 um i did the east greenstead youth triathlon um which i came fourth in so that was so that like proper got me into it because i was like uh, it's actually quite fun. Um, so then I started, so it was that same year I joined Canterbury Academy, um, which is the school that I'm like sixth form for. Um, and they had a triathlon academy because one of the, they partnered up with Langton, some Langton boys. Um, and one of the teachers at Langton boys was, well, is it, I was a triathlon coach. Um, and so they advertised it on um, the application as the triathlon academy. So I was like, I might actually go for that. Um, I was the only person that was doing it. So it was pretty much one to one coaching. But um, I didn't particularly get on with that coach. And he also left the school. So I was sort of having him as a coach. Mm. Um, so I was like, okay. I had a bit of a sticky situation because I want to progress, but I don't have enough experience to get me there. Um, so I joined in with the Active Life Triathlon Club, which is, which is a kind of like it's a kind of like makeshift triathlon club because they do occasional bike rides and they mostly do um, like swim sessions, mm. um, herons in Herne Bay. Um, so I started joining in those because the swim was has always been my weakest of the three in triathlon. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so as I got better, 
my coach obviously saw that and then as I was starting to actually think, all right, it's coming up to season, I need to start training the other two as well, like properly. Um, I talked to um, one of the main coaches for Active Life and she recommended Hannah Sangan, who's my current triathlon coach. Um, so I uh, started working with her um, and then because of school funding it that I started working with her because triathlon coaches can be quite a lot and yeah. luckily yeah yeah then luckily thanks to the school being um having like a sport section I was able to get funding for that and for races last year so so school paid for the Screenstead triathlon this year I managed to win so that was like okay this is actually going really well um and also Oysterman triathlon which I came second in my age group which was my first sprint distance hmm. triathlon. cool that's yeah. excellent yeah. And that, yeah so that was the that was two two you did last year or this year rather so that was two proper triathlons I did this year this year yeah and yeah. did you know did you know that hannah's been on the podcast no i didn't know that <laughs> isn't it a small world i was just thinking i thought she, he's, she's been on the podcast i've just looked it up and um yeah she was on episode 30 oh, that's funny. so that was back in 21 june oh, i came seventh so i missed out um and also i did devon duathlon which um was europe's quality so it's just like, so I registered, but like, it's like, I'll see how it goes. If I qualify, I qualify. If not, it's an experience. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. I mean, that's a, that's a great attitude to have a great way of looking at it. Cause all these different races uh, are all experience. So that you're gaining knowledge, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so, so going forward then, what are you looking to qualify for next year? And what races are you targeting? So I'm mostly looking at qualifying for the, it's Pontevedra Worlds next year, right. and I'm probably going to do all the races that, like, depending on if I qualify for the first, then I might do the other two. But Is this sprint triathlon? Sprint duathlon. Those are my two strongest. And it's actually Hannah that suggested going for, for it this year. Yeah. So, how far off? You know, you say you, you obviously your swimming's the uh, weakest link of the of the three, which is understandable because you probably haven't got a background in swimming coming from dancing. How far off the competition are you uh, in your swim? Quite far, and it's why. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, it's 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 nothing to be ashamed yeah. about, or you know what I mean. It's it's absolutely normal. I mean, you get these kids coming in. They've been like you've been dancing, uh, yeah. which which I'm interested in and we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but you've been dancing and they've been swimming. That's the difference. And and like dancing, I guess, the technique is everything in swimming, isn't it? As you know now, trying to catch up. Um, but the good thing about it is you've got the years to to be able to get that and 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 catch up. So you've you've got you've got age on your side. So that's good. Um, but I think you're very smart and Hannah's quite right that she's directed you in the duathlon route for now till that that improves so so yeah brrilliant that's really really cool so what are the i mean i haven't looked but um what are the what's the first race then that you can qualify so first one would be mallory just going back to your dancing how did it come about first and what type of dancing did you do so i started off when i was about three i think it was and that was just doing like street dance at my local leisure centre and then when the teacher at the leisure centre got her own studio I joined that and I started doing that um, and lyrical and ballet as mm -hmm. well um, so I was there for a couple of years and then in year seven I moved over to the dance warehouse which is closer to where I am um, and uh, you know, I did hip hop and ballet for a bit um, just because I still really enjoyed hip hop at that point. So yeah. Um, and then I slowly started to 
yeah, a bit bored of hip hop, so I went just over to Band 8 because I knew that I could get UCAS points from it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to just pass my grade six because that's where I can get UCAS points from. Yeah. Because at that point, I was training for triathlons. So it was starting to get a bit, so I was starting to get a few injuries from just the difference in technique and um, biomechanics for the different things. So I started, I was, so I was like, I'm going to get my grade six done, get the UCAS points, and then I'm just going to go all guns blazing for sport and triathlon. Well, it'll have stood you in good stead. Yeah. Your, co- your coordination and your everything else will be uh, on on point, won't it, really? As well as your fitness, because I would imagine you've got to be pretty fit to be a dancer. Yeah. So what does a, a week of training look like at the moment? Apparently I'm coming back from a quad tear. Yeah, I'm getting back into training this week. Okay. It's like the last two weeks has been like no impact to low impact to no inside, which hasn't been all bad because I've missed a lot of the weather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But this week I'm starting to get back to full training. So I've got uh, I've got two turbo sessions, which are like tense turbo sessions. Then I've got two easy runs that I'm starting to build like my running and my impact back up. Mm. Then I've got a my first ride outside in what must be four weeks. Yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty. I don't know about where you are, but it's been dire here, just been so wet. Yeah, it's um, raining right now where I am. Yeah, same, same here. Um, I've just come off the turbo this morning because it was. I've been to work and I thought I'll just go on the turbo for an hour before our before our call. Uh, but it's just been horrible. That's the beauty about having Zwift and the turbo, isn't it? You can just jump on and and get it done. So, so I would be swimming on Saturday, but I've got um, a level coursework that I have to get done. Yeah. Yeah, that's taking priority for a little bit until that's done. Good, good, yeah. Well, that's brilliant. Um, it all seems to be going uh, in the right direction according to plan, doesn't it? So you got your head screwed on. and Nice one. Well, it's great to meet you. Good luck with everything. We'll uh, catch up soon. Yeah, cool. Here we are with Jerry Moss starting the first episode of Amp Next Gen. He's been kind enough to agree to be a guest on this series. He's a teammate of mine at Wolves Breakfast Club and great runner and great biker. He inspires us all. Welcome along and if you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks Rich. Um, so I'm originally from Devon. Um, I call it Devon because um, my dad was in the army so um, I travel around the world a bit as, as a youngster but we settled in Devon. Um, I went to school there at Devon before um, joining the Royal Air Force Regiment um, when I could just to get away from Devon and, and see the world. Um, so, yeah, um, I joined the military, um, but before I joined the military, um, I was very much into sport school. I hated uh, normal lessons. I hated schoolwork and I hated being sat in the classroom looking out and watching people, people play sport. So um, I was heavily into playing hockey. I represented the county at hockey. and football, cricket, anything I could do in terms of sport I used to play at um, and really, really enjoyed it and that was my world. And I, I think it's really odd because um, um, I look at the, the road conditions when we talk about cycling and um, I remember as a, as a 15-year-old getting on the dual carriageway on my bike, cycling five miles to hockey practice, playing hockey and then cycling home again. I, I just don't know whether I'd do it in this day and age. Um, but I, I enjoyed the outdoor life um, and then so I decided to join the Royal Air Force Regiment um, and um, I got myself fit before joining I, I did a lot of running um, and yeah um, when I joined really enjoyed it um, and spent lots of years um, I'll come on to that in a minute but um, within within the regiment and traveling various places and again doing lots of sport so I used to do a fair bit of running um, again I, I played hockey carried on playing hockey um, and I represented the Royal Air Force ah, yeah. did they have a team then? Yes, they do. Yeah. yeah. So when I went through training, my 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 phase two core training, um, I was selected for the RF under twenty three squad the, ah. week, the weekend before my final exercise. So I had to go from North Yorkshire all the way down to Kent to play Kent under twenty one or under twenty three. Sorry, and uh, yeah, and then come back up again and go so on exercise. Kent was that still in the 
in the forces then? Was no, it different... so that, that was playing the civilian Kent ah, under 23 right. squad. Oh, okay. Represent for the Royal Air Force, yeah, yeah. and uh, so it was a bit of a journey. Yeah, uh, and we got thumped by Kent. <laughs> very good. So, uh, um, but yeah, so I, I carried on playing hockey in the Royal Air Force. Uh, represented the Air Force, the Inter Services, which mm-hmm. we won, which was the first time in several years. Um, subsequently, the RAF have done very well. But um, yeah, I did that, and, and, and all the other good stuff that went along in, in military life. And and I did a half marathon when I went out to Gütersloh in Germany. That was as a youngster, and uh, did pretty well at that. And uh, I just wish I could run as fast as I could do then. Well, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> but age is a bugger. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's interesting because you get swept along with life, and 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 probably didn't train as much as I should do. Probably didn't concentrate on one thing. Um, enjoyed life a little bit too much. Travel the world. Um, and look back on it now is probably one thing I would change. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, mm. and I would have kept that training going. Um, when I went through training, uh, we did a race out in Bruggen called Bruggen Ten. Uh, it's a 10 mile race it was a great great atmosphere it's a great race and i did it 101 um so as a youngster without any training i was i was doing all right <laughs> and um just wish i'd kept that going now and i can feel it yeah yeah uh and so yeah so um i spent the majority of my career with the royal air force regiment um i left regular service at the end of uh, 2011 and then i took up full-time reservist post um in a training environment which works well for the work-life balance for mm-hmm. me um, and it gave me the opportunity to to fit into the local community and then slowly start doing more sport, more training again. And I asked uh, Joe from World's Breakfast Club if she'd teach me to swim. Um, and that came on pretty well. Yeah. And then she said, hey, why don't you start doing a little bit more and a little bit more until I end up in the World's Breakfast Club <laughs> running, cycling and swimming uh, when I can. Yeah, and there's no stopping you now. That's it. You're, I wish. You, you and Michelle, you're good, good lady. You're both... Uh, a big part of the club now. Yeah, I think it really helps with your partners involved. Yeah, because it, oh, 100%. It, gives you, it gives you that that you know motivation, but also you can do activities together. Yeah, we to- we were talking about this on the last um, full episode um, about how easier it is if your partner's racing as well because they get it, mm-hmm. they understand, rather than having to go off on your own and try and mm-hmm. do things um, and be a bit more. And then explain why you, why you spend five hours on the bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a lot, a lot easier. But not everybody's in that privileged position, I suppose. So, so yeah, hundred percent. It's a lot easier if your partner's in yeah, it as well. Yeah, definitely. So you know, as joining World's Breakfast Club, it was uh, there's obviously some excellent athletes, um, and 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 inspired me to do more really and get involved. And and that competitive nature is slowly come out again. Um, mm. And to try and, and, and do something and, and, and have some sort of focus really to aim for rather than just training, training, yeah. training. Yeah. So on that then, what are you looking to aim for? What's your goal? So I think my goal, my short-term goal is to compete um, at standard duathlon. I'm going to give that a go before my, while my knees are still okay. Um, obviously that's, that's sort of taken its toll over the 34 years in the military, but so I, my, my short-term goal is to aim for a European qualifier, um, and that's Ashridge, um, sort of the middle of February, yeah. um, at standard distance, uh, and see where I go from there. Um, I, I hope that if the training goes well and the race goes well, that um, you know, I'll, I'll continue the standard duathlon in, for the next year, mm. uh, and then just see if there's an opportunity to do something else. But I'll see how I get on. Yeah. Starting point. Got to start somewhere, haven't you? Um, and... I think Olympic distance is the middle middle ground really. You might say middle distance is the middle ground, but I think if you want if you want to go down to to do a sprint race, um or you want to go up to do a middle di- middle distance, then I think Olympic distance is a good place to start. Um and I think like we've said before, you've got to play to your strengths and your obviously the strength your strength is the bike where in a middle distance it's it's twice the amount yeah. of time on the bike than it is at a sprint um but i think whatever you do you do well anyway so um that's yeah so that's good um i think that's that's great that's a great introduction and going forward we're not sure whether we're going to do one a week one a week diary or two every two weeks diary but um you can sort that out and then, uh, yeah, it'd be great to hear how you're progressing. 
Uh, when did you say the race was? February so it's, the... It's February the 18th. 18th, so, so mid-February. Took good about eight weeks. About eight go, weeks, yeah. To go. So, so um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And, I mean, we can take it further past that qualifying to see... Um, so when's the standard European race? Uh, so I don't. We not got a date not, for that yet. I don't think we've got a date yeah. for that. Because we could take it, we could carry on and take it up to that to the race. But we can see how it goes, mm. can't we? Yeah, you know? definitely. Um, you know, I I think it would, like you said, it'd be a good benchmark for me to yeah. see where we're in February against. You know, there's obviously some excellent athletes but yeah. getting times, and just to see where I'm at in terms of health, yeah. fitness. Um, and whether it's right for me, yeah. uh, like you say, I, I love biking. Yeah. That's my that's my thing. Um, I, I think the Astridge course should suit me on paper. Yeah. A bit undulate, a bit hilly. That's you know that's my thing. Um, and whether actually I look back and go, do I want to go aqua bike? Do I want to go longer mm. distance? Um, but it's something you know, I, I, I one step at a time. Yeah, I think I, that's I yeah, that's I mean that's a great way of looking at it. Um, just one step at a time. You've You've, you've pointed out your A race, so that's the thing to go for. And then once that's done, either way, you can then see where you want to go from there, can't you? Like you yeah. said. So, yeah. And there's plenty of opportunities. Oh, you're, you're more aware than I there's am. There's masses of them. I mean, yeah. like you say, you, you, you've just got to use your strengths um, and your biking is your strength. So whatever you decide to make with that, go with that swimming or, or just staying with a duathlon or a complete yeah. triathlon, yeah. it's... There's so much out there to choose, um, and because you're at the beginning of your journey, there's no right nor wrongs. It's what you prefer doing yeah. and what you're happiest doing. I think. I just think I just think uh, the swimming is just such a technical, yeah. technical sport that you know I wish I'd done it as a youngster. And yeah. I, you know, some people make it look effortless, and and if you're not from a swimming background like me, it's yeah. hard work. It's technically hard. Yeah. Physically, it becomes hard. Um, but if I could master that with some, with continued coaching, then that would you know that'd be something that definitely need to look at and again that's something that if you go longer distance the swim's such a small part of that it, as long as you're not like too far behind but <laughs> you could be i mean look at the pros they can be five six seven minutes behind and they'll make that up on the bike and the mm. run so the longer you go the more insignificant the swim part is so it's just what you prefer doing isn't it at the end of the day what yeah. do what do you want to spend your time focusing on yeah. to get to so yeah so it'll be interesting to see how you get on and, and follow you. Um, I mean, obviously, I'll, I'll be following you anyway yeah, in, in real yeah, time because yeah. it's, it's great to watch and it's really nice to see you, your progression and coming on in real time. But for everybody listening, it'll be, uh, it'll be fun to, to see how you go on and, and hopefully inspire other people who are trying to do or maybe considering qualifying because, you know, that's the point of the podcast, trying to inspire people. So, yeah. So, thank you ever so much for taking your time and um, agreeing to do it. Yeah, no, thanks, Rich. I'm looking. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Daniela. Um, I am Romanian, but I moved to Spain when I was 19 years old and then moved to England when I was just 30. Um, my background, uh, I come from a very poor family and we didn't really have much. Also, I think in England, you're very... Um, fortunate so to speak that you can swim through your school so you can learn that neither in Romania or in Spain we have this uh, opportunity is uh, that, uh, sorry is that uh, Romania maybe would have expected it but in Spain I would I would have, yeah, wouldn't no. have expected it I'd have thought there'd have been access to swimming no even like for instance I come from a seaside town yeah. uh, with a pool with, with like a Team with the pool. This is Spain, not this is Spain I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And even there, it's not it's no. not a normal thing you do. No. Uh, so when I moved here and my partner told me about that, you can learn through your school. And I was like, this is amazing. Mm. Because for me, it's a life skill. Yeah, of course. Um, I drone when I was probably six or seven years old. Uh, I was trying to cross a river with a neighbor and she had two children. And she was holding either of the children, um, you know, by the hand. And I was holding the little boy. And obviously, the currents were got too strong. Mm. They swap me away and I just remember being underneath the water, tumble turning like this and even now the image is so vivid in my mind you won't believe it um, and it's just, it's a hand who's picking my right wrist and he's pulling me up and you're like God, I have gospel on me right now because for me that was never going to go away with me mm -hmm. and that man actually saved my life mm -hmm. 
um, and to go into a water for me, even if it was going like to my chest uh, level, I was just getting in a, such a panic attack. Uh, it was almost unbelievable, <laughs> you know, yeah, it was yeah. like, like hyperventilating yeah. and um, it was horrible. Yeah. So I, yeah, I never, had, I thought I'm going to die without knowing how to swim. That I just because so many people try, but my feet towards the water was so high, yeah. I never thought I'm gonna um, be able to do so. But um, as a child, we, my sister received a, a bike, and actually it was a road bike because um, Romania had like a, a I don't know if it's a broader ship you call it, like mm-hmm. uh, kind of like this with um, country from with, with, with Belgium. So it was a town from Belgium which is in like a relationship with our town and they were giving to every family of your correspondent oh, yeah. family over there yeah, yeah. and three times a year they will send us like a little present and stuff like that and we communicate through letters and pictures and stuff like that and my sister received one of these road bikes wow. uh, I was seven um, but I was very active as a child more than my sister wasn't um, so she got this bike because the lady who was still telling a to this family about my sister she was describing me not my sister uh-huh. <laughs> because she was confused so they sent her a bike thinking well sh- she's very active my sister never really used the bike i was just on that bike all day yeah. long uh, i absolutely loved it and because obviously the the position would be it and we remain we have in my town we haven't seen that mm. what my dad did was um move the handle you know kind like, of yeah, yeah, yeah put it yeah, up yeah. to uh, be a more comfortable position and i absolutely loved it uh i did hand, uh, handball and volleyball in school um and another thing i used to start i started to do when i was probably 14 i started to run right but again romania is a full country we don't really know about these things and people started to laugh there are lots of people that were laughing at me they're saying she's crazy what are you doing this for but i didn't care you know i was just really enjoy it mm. and then you know i just started to build and then i moved to spain life's getting in the middle and i stopped it yeah. and i was back and forth to the gym um and then i started really hard in the gym and started to run i was doing spinning but nothing to do a proper plan or do a proper mm. i just get put my shoes on and then go for a run this is all i've done and then Moved here to England. Um, I really wanted to buy a road bike when I was in Spain, but again, life got in the middle. I didn't manage to, mm. so I bought the road bike here, um, and I started to ride it on my own. Uh, I remember going just back the full so I think, oh my god, I went so far, <laughs> you know, like ten miles. Um, but that built up very easy because obviously, I think doing four days in a week spinning for like I don't know two or three years, you know. Mm. I wasn't like proper beginner beginner mm. kind of. Um, I did that for a few months. I don't know from April till probably June, July, mm. and then uh, one day when I was in the in a bike shop in J C Cook, um, I asked the, the guy uh, if he knows any like a group lady groups that I could go. By a chance, it was a lady there. Uh, Vicky Loftus, I don't know if you know her. Yeah, well, uh, she said, yeah, well, it's this breeze ladies group where you go and you have a chat and uh, blah, blah, blah. So she sent me an invite. I joined the group on Facebook. And um, this group was starting in New Waltham. So what I was doing, I was biking to New Waltham, like mm-hmm. for 15 miles, two or 10, 12 miles with them, and then bike home. Um, it was just for a little bit of company because obviously I didn't know, no, I did I know no one here um, and it was more the social in part of it because mm. they were quite like very very steady I was a lot more fitter than than they yeah. were but for me it was amazing because I didn't know anyone and through one of those ladies I met um, Tracy Wilkinson oh yeah and um, on the end of that summer uh, Tracy was doing like a hills uh, reps so I started to talk with her and um, because on that summer we went on a holiday, my partner and I, to to Cyprus, and it was, we were at this amazing uh, seaside, and we rented the boat, and obviously the boat you can't leave it at the mm. edge of the sea, and he said, well, now we need to swim towards the <laughs> beach, and I'm like, no. So I went up down the ladder, and I'm like, no, I can't do this. So I went up, and then he said, well, why don't you lay on this... Uh, inflatable beds 
hold into my um, ankle and then I'll, I will swim. So this is what we did. And then... Um, genius. We, genius. <laughs> and then at some point he said, well, let's go like... There is a full... By this point it's like a full um, sea with people mm. swimming and having fun. And we got to some point where my feet wouldn't touch the floor, the sea floor. Yeah. And as I said before, yeah. I got into my panic attack and I'll get me out of here. Like, oh, and everybody was looking at us. I was, I was maybe such a, probably was just like, I don't know, inches. Mm. But because my mm. feet of water was so big, I just could not. And I started to cry and, uh, well, it got me to like a half a meter away in a safe place, so to speak. And he said, well, I um, challenge you to do a, a triathlon. By this point, I didn't really know what triathlon was about. I knew in row swim back in the room, but no distances or anything mm. like that. Um, so uh, this it goes, when I got in touch with Tracy, it was about to swim, to, to join a club and mm. do some swimming session. Uh, so she got me in touch and I started to do a few of the, like at the first one I realized, I can't go to a club swim session because I wouldn't even go to the deep end. My swimming session was from the shallow end mm. to the middle of the pool and turn around mm -hmm. because I was so afraid. Mm. And um, it's a very funny story. Um, there is something from our club that means a lot to me, which is Phil. I remember when I couldn't swim, at the end of every single session, he will come with me and will say, now we go together to the end of the pool. So we were swimming alone, and every time we would go to um to the halfway through, I was just getting in my panic mode, and he was just like, "Calm down, I'm here next to you. If something happens to you, I will save you. So don't worry." And that will give me the confidence mm -hmm. to go to the deep end. Yeah, yeah. Um, it might sound silly to a lot of people, but it meant the world to mm -hmm. me. Um, and then I realized, well, I can't do this. I can't really learn much. I'm disturbing the other swimmers that really want to learn and to swim. And uh, I started to um, to do one to one yeah. swim sessions. Some lessons. Yeah, some lessons. Um, I think I was one month into it, so I have to think I was even worse than a child because yeah. first of all, I that, did, you had that fear. Exactly, yeah. I didn't know what to swim. I didn't no. know any about the techniques, or I didn't even know how to float. Mm -hmm. You know, but I was afraid Fair of the water. Yeah. So I think I started in January, the one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. um, this is 2018. Mm -hmm. And then a month later, we played this game when the coach was throwing a toy into the bottom of the pool. We started the shallow end and I had to go and pick up the toy. So we were moving along to the deeper end. When we got to the deep end and she threw the toy, um, I managed to get the toy, but I didn't manage to get out of the pool. Mm -hmm. So I was drowning in the pool. She had to jump in the pool to actually bring me to the surface because instead to swim upwards, I was swimming, I think, to the right or something like that, to the shallow end, yeah. and I was just getting too much water into it. I, and because also she understood very well my fear of the water, yes. she acted very yeah, quickly. Yeah. And that was on a Friday morning. Um, I remember she called me in the evening to see how I am and all these kind of things. And then uh, I said, no, don't worry, I'm going to be next day on Saturday with the club. So I said, oh. I can't believe it. I said, well, yeah, but we can't leave ourselves to, you know, I'm on the path now. Mm -hmm. I need to follow my yeah. path. Um, yeah, so I think in three months, I managed to swim 400 meters. Wow. Um, I went to my first race. I think it was the Sodol mm -hmm. um, uh, sprint uh, triathlon because I wanted to see why involves what our people are doing. You just went to watch. Just went to watch yeah, and yeah. support, yeah. yeah. Um, I think you competed, because it was Kate with Patty, we were supporting. And, yeah, and then my first uh, triathlon was Lincoln Sprint. Uh, I was swimming in like in 14 minutes, which is ridiculous. But I remember Not coming... you were swimming. Yeah, I was swimming. That was the thing. And I remember even now coming out of the pool and seeing Steve Hunt's in the um, transition, I was like, Steve, I swam 400. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's massive, isn't it? Yeah, you, you know, won. You should never underestimate how massive that is for you. Mm. You know, from the back, your background story, what you've just told us all, it's just, that's huge. 
yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, and I did the bike, and I enjoyed that. I think it was my fastest bike mm. up, at, up until then. And then I did the run, which I kept my uh, park run PB. Again, it was like, and I was offered the one. I think I never enjoyed something so much yeah. in my life like that race. I enjoyed it so much that I went back home and I entered three other races straight away. Usually, that's usually what happens. <laughs> you, get, you get the bug after having that, that hard. Yeah, thing. and I think for people who started, enjoy your first one because that is just such a yeah. wonderful achievement. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that because you can't compare with anything else. You know, because yeah. you only go in a step and then a third race, then you start to compare yourself and I've done this and I've done the other. But the first one it is... Is unique. It's an achievement. It's an achievement, and you can't compare with anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then I entered this another three sprints, uh, and I've done one or two. And then, like in the summer, I say to my very good friend Kate, "I would like to try an open water mm. triathlon." I said, "Well, yeah, it's this uh, Olympic uh, distance in Allathorpe." And it was like August time. Uh, I did that again. I survived the open water. Um, very proud <laughs> again it took me a while um, yeah and um from there uh, i decided well i want to do an iron man yeah from there it was crazy distances wasn't it <laughs> yeah just yeah. from straight away that year when i learned to swim in september i entered out low mm. full iron man distance um i just thought like what could get wrong you know i i'm a very determined person you are. um the when i i don't know if i have a goal i just i'll do my my best you know i'll do it i will go above and beyond i would say uh, i love i love challenges too that's true um so yeah in january 2019 i started to train for uh, an ironman well from this one um i did there were a few of the a few of the people from the club that they're doing the full ironman which is which was nice because they also put in place a half ironman um so you can actually get you know the the sense or the feel of the um, of the racing and mm. it was quite cheap it was something in the club that, that was good it was good for me because I never I have done, I never done a half Ironman either yeah. so part of the training of a full Ironman is to do a half Ironman so we did that unfortunately for us when the Ironman uh, time uh, came by um, we had a lovely weather all the week around but Saturday started to really pour it down mm. and on Sunday it was even worse mm. so we go like I don't know. 1,200 people in the water, and he's chucked it down. Mm. I was making the swimming time just, mm. you know, barely just there. So you have to do it in two hours, uh, mm. and then you have to be out in two hours and 15 minutes, 15 minutes after the first transition. And I got in a lot of panic attacks because, obviously, a lot of people starting a mass, yeah. uh, mass start, uh, people swimming on top of you, kicked and punched, and my fear came back very very hard so you do a loop and then come walk a little bit and then do another loop um so when i finished i looked to my watch and i saw it was one hour 54 or something like that and the guy was saying well, well you're not going to be allowed you're not going to be able to carry on and do the bike and all that and i was so desperate cause i was trying to tell him no but i've done it under two hours you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and he, said, and he was just trying to say to me no you, you know you can't so you can't bike and all that no no but i've done it because i thought he was saying to me I can't carry on because I haven't done. The, I haven't made the cut yeah. of time. But what she was trying to say to me, bless him, he was that because of the weather and the flooded ah, roads and all this, yeah, the yeah, yeah. branches and the trees That's on right. the, they stopped the bike. They did, yeah. And they, they, they did an amazing work and put the run up in like in an hour and a half, which is was amazing. Uh, it stopped a little bit for an hour or so, but when we started to run, oh my goodness, it was just like hell. Yeah. It was hell, the rain. I never did something like that. Um, and that didn't really feel me like I felt. Like I've done an Ironman. Plus, the bike was my strongest mm. discipline. And I, I went home and I started to cry. <laughs> I trained all these long you know, not be able to call myself an Iron Woman, blah, blah, blah. And my parents said, well, let's find another one. So we looked through and we found um, another Ironman. It was two weeks later than this one, but this one was going through the night, starts at six o'clock in the evening instead of six o'clock in the morning. So um, yeah, we traveled down to in Dartford near London and also was in laps because it was in industrial estate and it was close roads and you have to do 20 laps for the bike 
and uh, eight for the run and four for the swim. And uh, Can I just ask a question: hmm. How on earth did you keep tally of your laps? The the bike I was trying to keep up with uh, with it, and then I said it, my partner was there. Well, they were Kate and uh, yeah. Abby, and then two of my Spanish friends. And uh, I said to them, "Keep." Uh, I even bought a whiteboard with a pen right. for them to <laughs> keep up. But Very they, yeah, but they didn't keep up with that. What did she do? Six or did she do seven? We don't remember. So at some point, when I thought I was near the end, um, I stop and I ask. Um, you know how many I've done, and they will tell you, tell oh, me your right, name, and they okay. will tell you, well, you've done so many laps, you have so going many. Over the mark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, um, that's not too bad, though. No, it's not. Um, so the problem was with that one was very close to be cancelled too, because the winds there were fifty miles per hour winds. <laughs> so um, they were waiting because we're saying the for weather forecast at six o'clock that the wind is going to drop. So they moved the start from six o'clock to seven in the mm -hmm. evening. Um, so yeah. Again, extremely choppy, my fear of the water. Mm. I think only do I even done worse. I think I done the swimming two hours and four minutes. Mm. But because it's such a small event, they let me yeah. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. go. And I think there were another two or three people behind mm. me in the same situation. So uh, my partner would keep saying to me, your race starts when you get to the bike. Because, you know, yeah. just survive the swim because yeah. it's your weakest point. Get into a bike is the thing you most enjoy. You're very good at just go for it. Well, my first few laps, I couldn't because I was just panic attack after panic attack in the water. I could not go over it. Mm. Um, so they were all them there. So because every time if you go in a lap, every, like every lap, you see them twice, mm. you know, and they were like, come on, daddy, you know, the shouting and uh, music and even people that I never met in my life, they keep, come on, daddy, you can do that. Like, who are you? you know, kind of. It was really nice, a nice atmosphere. And I was thinking every time I was going around, I was thinking, I'm gonna ask them how disappointed they're gonna be of me if I will um if I will give up. But every time when I was coming around them and I was they were so cheerful, I was embarrassed to actually ask and then I was going another lap and another lap until I made the the full bike. Then I'm going in the run, I done the for I run the first lap. Each lap was like a little bit over a five K. And on the second one, halfway through, I started to walk because I was throwing so much bad things to myself. Mm -hmm. You're no good at this. You know, you don't have to prove anything. You tried it once. You did. You didn't success. Why would you be successful now? It's just like the brain mental. that gets yeah. Ninety percent mental, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It uh, is. Probably this is the one actually taught me. It's actually the brain that yeah. you know that plays a lot of of bad in it. And I remember going around, um, Abika, she came like towards me, come on, you can do it. And I said, no, that's it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up. And I actually bent over to remove my cheap from my ankle. And then Kate and Corey said, no. And they jumped from wherever they were sitting down. No, you can't. Look, you have another seven hours. If you want to walk 30 kilometers, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to start to walk with you. So they started to walk with me. It was like three o'clock in the morning. You know, they were, bless them, they were mm -hmm. being awake all this time. I was power walking. They were like gently walking. Colin actually pulled the muscle from how the way he jumped <laughs> from, yeah, from the chair. And then I think we walked like a kilometer or so. And then he was making like a kind of a little loop around. And I said to them, wait for me here. I'm going to start to run again. And Colin said before, I said, why don't you take some of your caffeine tablets, some salt steaks and uh, some ibuprofen? Well, I, I was having a bag with all these kind yeah, of little yeah. things. And I said, well, it's not a bad idea. So I took those. Um, so I started to run that little loop, which was like another kilometer or so. By the time I came back to them, I said, well, I'm going to carry on running. And I don't know what happened there, but it's just something that clicked in and I never stopped running. It was a very, very slow run, but I never walked yeah. again the entire race. So for nearly 20 miles, I just run and run and run. So, yeah, I finished that uh, for a tarot man. Yeah. And um, from that, I don't know. Uh, next year was the um, COVID time. I trained yes. again and I enter again because I said, well, I have unfinished business with this race. I need to go back and enjoy mm -hmm. the swim. Uh, this 2019 winter, we did a lot of cold water swim because mm -hmm. uh, we were doing the fish in London, mm -hmm. the cold water mm -hmm. swim. Um, and uh, we realized... Uh, I could stay quite a while in a cold water mm. without actually be bothered about it. I don't know why, but it felt like that. And then the guy who helped me with the swimming 
that uh, moment in time, you say, well, why don't you do a nice mile? I think you, you'll be good at this. So I trained for that. I did a qualifier for that. Everything was fine. Unfortunately, COVID mm, kicked in yeah, yeah. and I didn't manage. Yeah. Although I did swim the, the mile in 3.9 degree was the 1st of January after we ran the 10K in Cleethorpes. Yeah. We went to this point where we were training and I did swim a mile. Mm. Um, I think 48 minutes or wow. so it took me but yeah <laughs> rather you than me <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah came out of the water I think it was the first time when I had a proper shivering yeah. um, uh, and then I tried to, to train again to do the Ironman but again didn't happen so yeah. 2020 summer I went back to Spain and again 2021 I went back I did each year a half Ironman mm -hmm. and then um, last year I done I completed the, again the midnight yeah. arrow and I went back because yeah. um, I was training and I didn't have any goal and I just I remember saying that if I'm because la la last year I did um, no two years ago I did London I biked long, loud to London in a day mm -hmm. which is like 180 miles yeah. and then this year I said well I'm gonna do uh, which was 2022 I biked London to Paris in 24 hours mm -hmm. And then I was doing, I did another few hundred miles. Um, I did Cambridge, uh, 100 miles mm -hmm. by ride. And then, yeah. And then I've done York to Lincoln to York, which is cheap, 262 kilometers, probably 70 miles or something yeah. like that. And I say to Colin, my partner, if I'm going to manage to do the York to Lincoln to York, the bike ride, and then I'm going to run 10K afterwards, then I'm going to enter the Midnight Ironman. So I did this we were to 62 kilometer which is like 90 miles per hour average speed i was like where is this coming from i managed to run a 10k in a park uh, in a car park because there was no safe place where i could actually run so it was just like 200 meters up and down <laughs> <laughs> oh my god everyone was looking at your bloody mentor i know right thank you <laughs> um so it, uh, yeah i did that and then came back home and i was just my big issue is i don't really trust myself all the time think well, i'm not good I'm not doing well enough or uh, so-and-so is better than me. Was, you know, I always put myself down. And even though I say, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to enter the area, man, I wouldn't do it. And it's just on the Sunday night, Colin said, oh, um, what was the passport you use for the triathlon and events and stuff like that? And I say, oh, so-and-so. I said, oh, you should change it because, you know, um, it's not very safe. Well, five minutes later, I receive an email. He entered the air. Sneaky. <laughs> yeah. Well, you say, if you're going to do this and you're going to do the other and you've mm -hmm. done all of this, and just, I'm helping you. Um, yeah, so this is how it started. Yeah. Um, and then I done the midnight and I really enjoyed it. Um, Colin, I remember, asked me how long it's going to take you to swim. And it was a very sad event before we got down to the race. Because while we were driving down to Dartford, we received a phone call that um, a lady who had a massive impact in my life, and the reason why Colin and I were together, mm. passed away. Mm. And uh, just, I remember, <laughs> you know, being in the van, eating rice and chicken, this is what I know, normally eat before a race, just non-stop crying. Mm. <laughs> and I can't do this, you know, kind of. No, you can because uh, Jane would have wanted to do it and, uh, you know, do it for her. She always supported you. And, and it's true, she always supported yeah, yeah. me in, yeah. um, in all these crazy events. And um, I go there and because I was so stressed, I said to him, I don't know, it took me two hours last time. Um, and I did it like in half an hour faster. I did wow. in one hour 34 this time. I couldn't believe it myself mm. either. But because I took it so leisurely, I, was, I actually even enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I absolutely yeah. enjoyed the swim. And when I came out, I remember saying to him, well, I have a half an hour PB. Started the bike. And after like, I don't know, seven or eight laps, it just again, her memory came back to my brain. Probably in the water, not as much because for me, it's, I always yeah, yeah. have to stay focused yes. and, you know, follow the technique, you know, kick, whatever, breathe, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever you have to do. Or as a buy, because I'm so confident with it, I think, you know, thought comes to your brain. And um, I remember stopping um, and I just, for a good 10 minutes, I could not stop crying. I was so sad. And because um, I didn't know she was going to die. Yeah. That's the issue. I yeah, know yeah. she was poorly, yeah. but she never told me the truth. And obviously, if you expect someone to die, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't expect her to die, it was a shock to the system. 
And then Connie said, well, just do another two laps, see how you feel. And then I did the... I remember like being halfway, no, I was nearly 20 laps, so I have another six laps to do on the bike. And it came in the middle of the road. You say like, oh, you were the first female. Bear in mind, there were like five female in there. No, no massive event for the full Iron Man. And I okay, it doesn't know what he's saying. Finished the bike, got into the run, and the organizer asked me, oh, which distance are you doing? Because they are doing all kinds of distances uh, there. And I said, I'm doing the full. And he said, you're doing very well because you're actually the first female. So I carry on. I'll give me like a... Give you a boost. Yeah, give yeah, me a boost. Gosh. And I'm like, am I actually there? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then through the run, is like to any other races, you find amazing people with mm-hmm. amazing stories. And everyone starts, you know, we, we start to talk. And how did you get into this? And this and the other. And it's really nice because people are doing different events yeah. just because... You know, they're inspired by others. And, and it goes faster as well. Yeah, it, it goes faster. Yeah, yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I got a trophy because yeah. I came first female. Yeah, it's <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, and that was that. That was it. Mm. And then you've decided to try out for age group. Yeah, then um, when, I, when I joined the, the triathlon club, I joined a loud triathlon club because this, this is the old, just the only one in town. Um, and then... Um, Things started not to go so well for me in this club. And I thought, well, life is too short to stay in a, with a group of people you do where you don't feel good and comfortable. So I changed club. Um, and there are all these amazing people that... You come to a nice club yeah. for nice people. <laughs> this is the thing, because now we're doing whatever we're doing, doing because we're enjoying it. And up until like this year, I was just beating myself every single time if I wasn't doing as good as I thought. But because everyone around me was doing the same, whereas now... I did a 10k on the newest day and I, I think it's the worst 10k I've ever done mm. but I was so happy <laughs> you know I just I don't care I'm here to enjoy it you know exactly exactly what you know yeah and there are all these kind of people that they are doing um, um, age group qualifier and I thought hmm, should I give it to go yeah. you know because it's kind of what's next on the agenda so yeah, yeah. I decided to do a duathlon good so the duathlon you're doing is for the European in 2025. Yep. And it's a sprint distance. It is. And it's up there in Scotland at the East Fortune uh, duathlon. Mm-hmm. And there's a few of us doing it, isn't there? Mm. So I thought it would be fitting for you to be on this um, next gen series because mm-hmm. you've got a wealth of experience in triathlon, but usually longer longer distances. So it'll be interesting to see how that wealth of knowledge and background transfers to mm. s- sprint and especially duathlons because yeah. you haven't done a lot of those, have you? No, I only done a, an Olympic yeah. duathlon and that was like back in 2018, I think. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So I just thought you'd be a prime candidate. Oh, thank so, you very much and thank no, you for thank, inviting me no, here, thank honestly. You, thank I you feel... for coming on. So a big thank you once again to Harrison, Jerry and Daniela for taking the time out and agreeing to do this spin-off of the Age Group Multisport podcast. I hope you'll listen in to the podcast going forward and see how they progress um, via their weekly audio diaries and we'll be putting those out hopefully weekly up until their um, qualification race and maybe beyond, who knows? We'll see where it goes. Uh, I think Jerry's up first. He's got his race, as he said, in February, the standard distance qualification race. So he's first up. Um, And that's about it. So if you'd like to get in touch, uh, you can email us at agegroupmultisportpodcast.gmail.com. And if you're an age grouper or you know any age groupers who'd like to come on our regular podcast the age group multi-sport podcast um tell them to get in touch via email or you can get in touch on instagram at amp underscore 1967 we're also on facebook at amp gb we're on x at age group multi-sport podcast and all our videos um and audios are now up on youtube and that's amp gb so, yeah, if you want to get in touch, you want to come on or just want to give us some feedback, um, we would love you to review the podcast, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, uh, give us some feedback 
and rate the podcast as well because that really does help. So much appreciated. Thank you once again for listening. And remember, stay safe, keep training, and love the process. Thank you.